you tired of dealing with the dirt and grime of bunkers that are commonly found beneath various houses? Everywhere you go, there's newspapers, coffee filters, cans, and off-brand Marlboro cigarettes. Well, then you need Ron Poe Peel's brand new Moppinator 12,000. The Moppinator 12,000 cleans just about everything. Dirt, blood and or wine. That could be either. We're gonna go with blood. And of course, freshly spewed fecal material, straight from the anuses of the unfortunate. The Moppinator 12,000 has gotten rave reviews from everyone who's tried it. Little John says, Yeah, yeah. Vince from Slap Chop says the Moppinator can clean almost anything, including my criminal record. Get your own Moppinator 12,000 today for the low, low price of one bunny soul. Make sure to call 1-800-R-I-C-E-G-U-M. That's one 800 R-I-C-E-G-U-M. The Moppinator 12,000 is the only cleaning instrument that can distort both time and space in order to clean virtually any surface, floors, ceilings, counters, basically everything that is touchable by the human body. Order the Moppinator 12,000 today and we'll throw in the Squeegicles 45,000 absolutely free. Have you ever wanted to clean windows like you've been utilizing methamphetamine for the last 12 years? Then you're gonna need the Squeegicles 45,000. Get your Moppinator today and don't forget, if it's good enough for fecal material, it's good enough for you. Hello, British Blitz, we're back with more House Flipper. So someone had mentioned to sell the money in the huckster's house. And we're gonna do it. You know we are, okay? This cash isn't going to be sitting here unscathed. The only issue was we have some extra stuff we have to do in here. But after we do it, we're gonna head back over to the Just Married house and we need to make it the most incredibly expensive apocalypse house ever made. First things first though, these doors gotta go. They're hurting me, they're hurting the gods on Mount Olympus, they're basically ruining lives and I'm not gonna stand for it any longer. So we're gonna get rid of all of this crap and what kind of door, what is our actual front, oh, I removed the front door as well. We don't have a front door. Then I guess I get to decide what the new decor for doors is going to be. Oh, let's see what we got laying around over here. Let's do the, uh, let's see, blue on black. Yeah, let's do blue on black. There we go. We're gonna do one of these. Uh, it's kind of a, yeah, it should work fine. Now, the only issue was, I think, if I remember correctly, there's no black interior door, or is there? Oh, there is, but I don't know if it's the exact same color. I'm just gonna hope that it is. Oh yeah, it's perfect. It's the exact color I wanted. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and slap down a whole bunch of these right quick. Mmm, good. That's hot. One more of these right over here. Now, before I forget... <laughs> uh, before I forget, hold on, let me, um... Let me go ahead and move the little anti-police repellent that we put down there. Now... Someone had mentioned, yeah, we're gonna, there we go, just gonna scrub that up with the Moppinator a little bit, try and get all of the broken promises and uh, other felonies off of this money before we go ahead and sell it. Now that we've done that, oh, oh yeah, oh, that's the stuff. Oh, a couple thousand dollars never hurt anybody. Go ahead and put that right like that. Okay, now that we have all that prepared, now we can grab this, throw it over here, and no one's ever gonna know the difference. They'll know, well, I mean, until they step in here and they like break their shin because there's like a three foot drop that no one's expecting. You know, when you buy a house, <laughs> those issues come with the price, baby. All right, we need a nice little entertainment area uh, to use our TV and such. Maybe like right over here. We also have an outlet right there, so it kind of makes sense. Let's get a glorious TV, throw it on there. We should have plenty of room. Oh yeah, perfect. All right, we need a lovely portrait right above the fireplace. Perfect. This picture is very interesting, <laughs> says the Smoth family. Oh, it sure is. I really needed to use the custom picture thing more. I think we're gonna go ahead and do it from now on. I noticed there was an area over here that I didn't paint, so I went ahead and took care of that real quick. There's some other, uh, I put some uh, bookshelves up in here because Donald Trump or whatever his name is always loves us. There's a bunch of other rooms in here that we're gonna need like to legitimately make into, I don't know what can fit in here, like maybe a, a child's bedroom or something like that. This room, this room is like really small. This actually looks like the same size of a room that I grew up in as a kid. Like it, there wasn't much space here so we need some lighting because it is freaking dull and drab there we go now we're doing slightly better okay now 
From there, we need an appropriate paint. So uh, let's see. Well, you know, we don't have to use paint. We could use wall tiles and panels, but they're all disgusting for a room like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use paint. Mmm, laughing strawberry. What do you think so damn funny, strawberry? Let's find out. Um, I don't know. It almost looks, it's so like, pinkish straw. It almost reminds me of like the inside of an intestinal tract. That should be the name of the paint color. Intestinal tract strawberry. I think it would sell more than laughing strawberry. I picture Jason Voorhees loving this particular color. All right, there we go. I don't know why I put like a computer desk inside where the baby is gonna be. I don't know. Maybe like I said, it's Dolan Trusk's baby. So he expects him to be getting very high grades in basically everything intellectually before he's like eight months old. All right, since we took all the money out of here, I gotta, I gotta make whoever buys this feel at least a little bit good. So uh, I just went ahead and I gave them pictures of money. So when I say that there's, that there's a room filled with money, we're technically not really lying. I guess we kind of are, and I'm just trying to make myself feel better, but whatever. There, this morning yellow paint should make them feel better. All right, a couple of ritualistic candles, and I think we're pretty much set. There we go. This place is ready to be sold for the moment time, and then we can head over to our giant mansion and do our thing. Now, how much stacks of cash? Well, this place, it better, this better sell for big money. Big money. I'm expecting it right now. Let's freaking sell this place. Start the auction. We bought it for 94,000. A big bedroom, how sweet. Wow, it's already at 135,000. Do you see what a picture does? You need a, it's a very specific picture, but it still counts. Let's see, 140. Chang Choi's up in there throwing his cash around. Yeah, like it ain't no thing. Veronica Lipson also, oh, lip, ton, lip, ton, up in there. The Johnson family, Jantar family, Dolan throwing out 149,000, but there's the Smoth family. Big cash, once, it, wow, holy crap. We are like really raking it in over here. $171,000. We got to negotiate this. $171,000. I'm going to want an extra $20,000 on there. It's too low. I want more money. Cool. I'll take it. You're, you're absolutely right. You will. Ninety-eight grand. we are going to go ahead and accept it. And now it's time to head over to our mansion. This bed occupies precious space. Thank you very much, Apocalypse Joe. Now, we didn't do very much upstairs. Well, we haven't really done anything upstairs. We still There's still plenty of stuff for us to do upstairs. I think that the downstairs, yep, right over here. Now, I removed a wall previously over here for the purposes of screenshots, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it back real quick. All right, there we go. We're back in command. All right, now that we've done all this, we are, we have a room in here. We have a lovely, uh, this was the, the urination room over in here. So that's working out pretty good. We got all of our, uh, which we call all of our um, gas cans and our generator over there. So this is going to have to be like the main quarters area for sleeping and stuff like that. So there's going to be a whole bunch of bunk beds in here. All right, the bunk beds are down. Everyone's going to need a couple of pairs of shoes just so that when they start walking through all of the dead bodies that are outside the apocalypse, they don't get like human refuse all over their feet. We need a desk in here because we're not friggin' savages. Let's, uh, right about there. All that and because the debt, you need a desk in order to put certain things on it. So now if you go over to survival, we can put down like our, uh, our knives and things here. It's like the his and her knife collection. A bunch of people that play CSGO would be, uh, would be very okay with this. So there's only space for three gas masks. So, um, the four people in here are gonna have to draw straws and see who gets to breathe in the toxic plutonium fumes or whatever once they go outside. Put a couple of med kits under there. There we have it. Oh, the one med kit isn't aligned correctly and it's gonna drive everyone crazy. There we have it. All right, we need a reason for everyone to get up in the morning. I decided to get a motivational picture. It says bad day, you thought yours was bad? It has a friggin' like cruise liner sitting on top of the house. How does this even happen? Like, what sort of tornado level apocalypse now d-day freaking cataclysm and dante's inferno has to happen that causes like a double v bottom giant boat to be sitting on like some dude's multiplex like you know everyone here is like damn like 
You can't go outside, look at that, and not snap a picture. If these, if everyone here had a cell phone right now on them that was working, they would all have them out videoing this. Now that Gray found them freaking custom- Well, now I, I knew about them, I just finally started using them. Now I started using them, they're gonna be everywhere. Alright, let's go upstairs. We need to deal with this house a little bit. We need to make this appropriate millionaire mansion apocalypse house-ish. I think that we start from the top and work our way down. For this bathroom, I was really feeling terrible wallpaper. I don't know why, but... Oh my god. I, for I forgot that I'm at, like, wallpaper paneling level 5. Look at the speed! It's like I'm throwing it like a touchdown past the wall. Look at it, right, right. Hut, hut, hut! Uh, right there. That is a touchdown. That is a touchdown play. World Cup. We're playing the World Cup up in here. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm already out of panels. I gotta buy some more. I'm gonna have to buy like three sets of these. Hold on. I'm just gonna buy them all now. Oh my god, it's glorious. It's such a good wrist workout too. Because you have to move your wrist like 180 degrees every time. I guess if I was smarter, I would have moved- Well, actually, I may still be able to do it like this. Yeah, move the panels just in front of you. So you don't have to move your mouse as far. So in the previous, uh, house flipper, you guys had some stories about, uh, getting injured and stuff like that and doing stupid things. Some people said they were trying to impress, uh, girlfriends or females and things like that. Some people weren't even like- There was one where someone was like a, a, a little baby and they ended up getting injured. Um, but- in the vein of trying to impress girls, I thought I would give you my own attempt to impress someone as a younger man. It's time for story time with Gray, where I share with you the most inefficient and stupid ways to do things throughout your life. So, I used to be like really into mountain biking as a young kid, and uh, my buddies and I would always mountain bike together, and there was a girl that would mountain bike with us, and this is like, it's kind of difficult maybe to exactly picture, but she was like a tomboy, like, how do I say it? Like, she was a tomboy that cleaned up really good. <laughs> So she still had like long blonde hair and she would still wear dresses every once in a while But like she was on the volleyball team and she went mountain biking with us So she was like super athletic and she was she had the same kind of humor that we had which was very inappropriate So we were mountain biking and there was a giant mud hole Like if you were mountain biking the mud in this hole went up to I want to use spring grass went up to like you know, like the tops of your knees at the top of your pedaling. So the challenge was that you had to get through, you know, through one side and out the other side of the mud hole on your bike without stopping. So obviously we're all trying to, oh, by the way, I just got the faster painting. So now it looks like I'm on, you know, freaking LSD painting. Actually, that wouldn't make you paint any faster. But I, I, I appear as if though I'm painting very quickly right now because I am. So we're all going to try and impress this girl and we're all going to bike super, you know, we're going to bike through this gigantic mud hole like a bunch of idiots. So the first guy goes, well, kid, again, we're all young, probably like 13, I think at this point, and he gets through the mud hole. And you could see he was like really struggling like he almost didn't make it so and and what we did was there was kind of like a hill so you would get a bunch of speed going down that hill and then you would hit the mud hole trying to get through it and just pump your legs as hard as you could trying to get through it and out the end and not get stuck in the mud that was in the mud hole so my other buddy went through and he made it through too he made it through the other side and at this point now if you so if you're trying to impress someone and there's three guys and one girl and the other two guys get it done you know that if you don't do this you're gonna hear about it and you're gonna feel like a jackass forever so i was like great now i have to do this and it has to go perfectly like my entire masculinity is staked on this so i get ready and I, I get everything going and i'm flying down the hill and i got like more speed than everyone else and I hit the mud hole faster than anyone and I'm powering through it and I'm like for in that moment I was like man these guys were like really struggling like they were having a problem with it I'm not feeling all these issues like I'm gonna make it through and make it look easy and then I'll really look cool in front of this girl and all of a sudden my wheels locked up in the mud like I got I, I hit a patch of mud that was so deep that I freaking flew over my handlebars about 12 feet from my bike 
like flipping over, completely flipping over. With my feet flying through the air. I hit the, I hit the mud. I was completely submerged. And everyone's like, oh, and I pull myself up and my bike is still standing there. Like perfectly erect in the mud because of how deep it was. Just hanging out. And I was completely soaked from my shoes to my hair and everything in mud. Like I actually looked like I was trying to get as muddy as possible. Needless to say, that first guy that got through the mud hole, him and that girl started dating like two years later. So now I have to ask, do you guys have any, or girls too. I don't know if girls, do girls try and impress guys like guys try and impress girls? I feel like really they, like not the same way. Like guys try and impress girls when you're young by doing stupid macho stuff. Like trying to get through a gigantic mud hole on a mountain bike like a jackass. I, I don't know if girls really do stuff like that. But I'm going to go ahead and ask. Let me know in the comments section. Do you, ha do you guys have any stories about when you tried to impress a girl? And then do you girls have any stories where you tried to impress a guy? I actually want to see the differences. Like I'm very curious. This is a good social experiment. I want to see what the differences are between the stories of the guys trying to impress the girls and the girls trying to impress the guys. Now like 80% of my demographic is male. So I'm expecting a lot more male stories, but I mean, you never know. So we've talked about the apocalypse going on outside, but we never got to see it. So now what I'm doing is I'm getting pictures down. So it, it, now it kind of, it'll at least kind of look like it. I got a whole bunch. All you have to do is go online, man, and type in like apocalypse backgrounds. There's all kinds of cool stuff. Look at this one, it just barely fits. Oh, it's perfect right there. The burning buildings, the broken landscape. See, if you look like this, unfortunately, there's a friggin' door in the way. But if you look like this, it looks pretty legit. Like, you could probably, I don't know, like, you could probably take one of these and make it, like, really small or something. And then, like, shove an extra one up here. How, what size can we get this thing in? Hold on, if we make it, like, 1.3, I think we'd probably get it in, maybe. Oh, look at that. Just barely. There. Now you, now you can't really tell. Now it looks appropriately sad and apocalyptic. And then you'd need something down here. Maybe I'll put like a bunch of desks or something. There's really nothing that's like the perfect height for this to like hide the green of the wall. The safes are pretty good. Like we could probably just use like a wallpaper and like a brown wallpaper or something like that. And it would blend in with the apocalypse scene. I actually really like that. Like that looks pretty cool like that now let's i can this could be like another command center i could put some computers and stuff over here maybe some things on the table you know what i just realized over at uh the dolan trusk's baby house i never put down a keyboard for the kid that's all right the young lad can just use his like mental prowess like his esp or something like that to type i'm sure it'll work that way all right y'all ready for this oh we're gonna have a zombie room Oh, it's perfect for an apocalypse room. Look at this. You get your zombies over here. We're gonna now you can mess with the auto fit and like make it all kinds of janky and stuff like that. I wonder if we like if I wonder if I could completely fill in like an entire wall. Hold on here. Let me see. That's pretty close. <laughs> Great pictures. I love these people. Like, no matter what I put on the walls, they're like, that's a fantastic picture. It looks great. Oh, yeah. It fits perfectly, though. It takes a little... It, it, you gotta work at it a little bit because it doesn't really tell you if it's gonna be closed or not, but that's pretty freaking sweet. All right. The beginning of the zombie room's looking pretty good. I made the I made the uh, walls, like, super, super dark. We need, like, a light switch in here. It's so dark. Hold on. There's gotta be a, um... There's gotta be a light switch. Let's, uh... I'll just put it, like, over here because I got paint paintings everywhere else there we go now we can actually see all the bloodied faces preparing to eat our entrails and whatnot all right the apocalypse house is underway we've got an idea of what we want to do there's a lot more stuff that we're gonna have to do though like a lot of stuff they need to make it so that you can like take pictures and put them on the entirety of walls like a giant wrap but for a room that would be fantastic. Hey, anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying House Flipper. If you want to make the YouTube machine happy, feel free to try and clean up the like button with the Mominator 12,000. Until the next time, stay foxy and much love.